totally take advantage of that. So the next slide is really talking about that and that uh, basically says uh, with a quote from Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Kind of uh, something that any scientist, any uh, technology leaders uh, has known. And uh, really we want to focus on, uh, on these partnerships like I just said, but also want to focus on really the national academies, uh, something that I was asked in this uh, you know, presentation to talk about just because it is a pretty unique vehicle uh, for us to help uh, and support our um, prioritization and collaboration. Next slide. Shows kind of the pieces of uh, the science portfolio that we have, you of course know our good friends uh, from Earth Science from the beginning of NASA, Earth Science was a key partner. Heliophysics focuses on the sun and the space between uh, the planet or how the planets and or how uh, Nikki Fox uh, told it, uh, says it like every space where that the sun touches and then planetary sciences and astrophysics. Uh, there's a new uh, symbol on here, which is biological and physical sciences. In fact, you will notice that this is my first presentation that I'm giving kind of as an overview of science with biological and physical sciences being part of the science mission directorate. We're really so happy to uh, welcome our friends who have been, uh, of course, working elsewhere in the agency as part of the science mission directorate uh, by, uh, you know, us to follow kind of a process and analysis that the chief scientist, Jim Green, did, and uh, that uh, the agency overall agreed upon. The, the Joint Agency Satellite Division is one that is built to support our cross-agency partners, NOAA, and, uh, and all of it together uh, is a program of leadership, a program we take pride in, like this uh, uh, kind of uh, slide uh, signifies. Next slide. So if you look uh, at the uh, strategy that we're utilizing, uh, of course, uh, at the beginning of that is our vision, our mission uh, that uh, uh, is driving us, uh, discovering the secrets of the universe, um, search for life elsewhere, and uh, protect and improve life on Earth. And frankly, what we're going to do at the moment we update the science plan is also add in space, because life, of course, with biological and physical sciences uh, also focuses, uh, protect and improving life also focuses on the lives that are in space. And uh, that's uh, these kind of application motivated fundamental science in that bucket in all disciplines or most disciplines. And then uh, astrobiology, uh, which is really what searching for life elsewhere is, uh, together with the fundamental science, really form the key motivation and the mission that drives each one of our missions, uh, each one of our projects going forward. Uh, we have values that are common to us uh, from NASA, but uh, we really want to focus on uh, improvement, uh, excellence and leadership, uh, as we often talk about, have a lot more to do with what's different than what's the same. Yes, there's many things we do not want to change that we've learned through hard lessons and going forward, but uh, we need to constantly uh, move forward and see how we can, in fact, build out uh, leadership and excellence uh, in support of uh, our objectives. Uh, our priorities, of course, are exploration and scientific discovery. Innovation is the tool that we're using to create that change and the partnerships is what we're talking about today. Inspiration is what's part of every one of our missions. We believe every one of our missions kind of speaks to uh, the amazing potential that humans have, uh, that these teams have to achieve something that when we start uh, feels impossible every time almost, uh, even for those of us who have done it many times. Next slide. So uh, let's talk about the Cato surveys. Uh, the Cato surveys uh, started as a concept uh, in astrophysics. Uh, the challenge being in astrophysics and here uh, the Cato surveys that we're currently working under, uh, by the way, you should know that there uh, three surveys that are being uh, worked on in parallel here. Astrophysics is the, the ones the farthest ahead. Planetary uh, is right behind them. And then uh, biological and physical sciences is the third that we just kicked off with a charge. Um, each one of those uh, activities is really uh, uh, focused from the academies. And I really believe that that is, uh, in fact, uh, you know, a critical route. So it's outside of NASA. And I have to tell you, kind of being the associate administrator, I'm really grateful that it's not up to me 
or to whoever sits in that particular chair to say right now, this is the highest priority because to answer that requires an assessment of where we are, assess, assessment of the highest potential uh, that we have right now and, uh, and everything um, uh, you know, uh, where we have come from. And each one of these plans goes through a very thorough uh, you know, analysis of that and, uh, and really brings forward a program that is balanced, uh, brings forward a program that each one of which has kind of uh, high points, kind of strategic elements, in some cases flagships, in some cases strategic investments, but also has a kind of at the bottom of the pyramid what is the most uh, important for the future, which is the RNA program, the research and analysis program that we're doing. So we really, and the more I'm, I'm working at uh, NASA in this job that I currently have, the more I do that, I believe in the importance and the uh, strength of this and the importance of getting it right, learning from previous decadals and going forward with our partners at the academy and the community as a whole. Next slide. Another way of uh, looking at our program is this way, and, and this is now the result of these uh, academy surveys kind of folded in time and kind of looking forward in bold face at the, uh, in fact, uh, the overall uh, missions that we're currently working on and the ones in, in regular font that are already there. What I'm proud of is that we are a directorate that knows how to turn off missions too. We have, uh, through the kind of overall consensus process of the senior review. And there's very few times in the history of NASA where people wait, get, went on the outside of it. And it's always to their peril, uh, but that together we have managed to set priority, not of what we're doing through the academies, but also how we're uh, stopping missions that are there. You see, of course, that uh, there's a lot of signs on the uh, space station, which is shown by that symbol from many disciplines. And we're really excited about that. Speaking about that, next slide. Here's a picture of uh, uh, work uh, at the uh, uh, space station, of course, with biological and physical sciences. And, uh, and really our uh, two astronauts here, uh, Christina Koch and Jessica Meyer, you know, in harvesting Misuna mustard greens inside uh, of the ESA laboratory, the Vecchi facility. And on Thanksgiving day last year, uh, you know, their own celebration uh, out there. And I, I'm uh, just so excited to, I have to tell you, I'm doing a lot of learning right now. I'm, you know, think, as I said, astrobiology is just a crucial part. The bi having biology with us now uh, is really opening up the spectrum of what we can do uh, for this uh, exciting uh, work to, stun, uh, of course, understand fundamental science, uh, protect and improve life in space, but also uh, actually really find life, uh, life elsewhere through understanding and uh, partnership between disciplines. Next slide. Private sector investments are really critical for us. And there's just one of those slides that talks about a commercial uh, set of entities. Of course, this is the Griffin Lander uh, uh, that is uh, going to the moon in 23. Uh, through the a contract awarded through a NASA Commercial Lunar Payload Services, which is really uh, an initiative that is uh, one of several that is uh, leaning forward on being a first customer in a service economy, as opposed to buying and kind of kind of pulling and operating uh, systems. In this case, uh, we're buying services uh, to the moon. This is an experiment. Uh, experiments like this uh, uh, have risk, of course, but we're comfortable with that because uh, we believe that for us to really go forward and take advantage of all uh, strength of the partnerships, we need to do it uh, aggressively and move forward. On the other side of this, uh, next is a telescope that right now is in environmental testing and it's going really well. In fact, I met with the team this morning and uh, I have to tell you most days or many days during a, a day, I'm meeting with the web team and I just uh, want to say how much we're excited going forward. We, of course, and I watched uh, as always uh, Ariane 5 uh, launches, uh, the, the most recent one. And I really look forward uh, to uh, to the day where this uh, next October, where this sets on top of one of those rockets and finds uh, its way to space where it's destined to be and uh, do amazing research uh, as we're going on the way there. Uh, if there's anything where we realize here is how much we are a team and uh, are successful as a team uh, and uh, going forward with it. Next slide. 
Uh, the international partnerships uh, is the next topic, and this, of course, is a solar orbiter uh, image. Uh, and uh, when you look at this, of course, you see the amazing beauty of our star, kind of observed in a way we cannot observe in a, another star. We also recognize and immediately remember that uh, Parker Solar Probe is flying through the extended atmosphere of that star at the same time as these new observations are occurring. This, of course, is the first light image of uh, May 30, uh, 2020. Uh, but really a testimony to our international partnerships. So is this next image, which is in Earth science, which is a dashboard kind of uh, built together by NASA, ESA, and JAXA, combining resource, technical knowledge, and expertise through partnerships that really strengthen our global understanding and environmental and economic effects for COVID-19 pandemic. Frankly, this way of operating is what we call a lemonade solution. We're all separated in different places, but building together this kind of tool is something that frankly, I wouldn't know how to go about uh, if it wasn't for COVID kind of opening up the way uh, for us to do that. And of course, we're not gonna wanna lose these lessons as well as many others as we go forward. Next slide. So I wanna talk about uh, uh, teams. And of course, you, you see here, uh, March 2020 perseverance disappearing into the clouds after uh, a launch on uh, uh, July 30. Uh, you see kind of somebody taking a picture from behind me and the, what you don't see is the relief uh, in my face and also the uh, excitement that is gone and that we're getting through the minute and 30 seconds uh, that we count down uh, kind of because of uh, you know the uh, various kind of safety precautions that we've played through and the team kind of all over being ready and supporting that. So this is uh, uh, Mars uh, Perseverance. Next slide. It's also Mars Perseverance and a picture that's taken on July 17th. Look at this team, this team full of diverse uh, experts that's bringing uh, expertise to, the, to bear to build a mission like this. When I see signs, when a child draws an image, I hope uh, so often as we go forward, we can communicate that it's excellent teams who do this in partnerships uh, with uh, companies that are aggressively pursuing perhaps venture funded companies and including with companies that have been with us for a while and, and are, are uh, important partners of ours with uh, organizations within the United States and beyond building uh, research projects that are truly leading and are excellent and, and kind of and helping us do this and pursuing these amazing a pursuits of humanity, one of the most important things we could be doing, which is to understand our universe and therefore our place in it. Next slide. And then what I'd like to do is kick it over to you and uh, kick off the, the Q&A, if that's okay. That's great, Thomas, and thank you so much for that. A uh, couple of questions, uh, just to start things off. Number one, and not to put you on the spot, uh, because you have lots of cool things that you get to go work in. Um, what's on the horizon that you are most excited about? Well, so, so right now, uh, for the, before the end of the year, there are two issues that are really important for us. The first one is the TAC event uh, for OSIRIS-REx, where we're going to go fetch those samples. We just did uh, the last match point uh, uh, test, and frankly, it was kind of uh, really down the middle, kind of a bullseye, kind of, I mean, you know, fly, think about flying this uh, spacecraft to within meters, uh, I mean, 40 uh, meters in this case, to this body that's uh, in space and, you know, getting uh, the object there, I mean, with the objective of getting a sample. I, I just, I mean, I, I couldn't be more excited about working with Lockheed uh, Goddard, University of Arizona on this. The other one, um, uh, later this year is to launch Sentinel-6 Michael Freilich. Uh, because of the passing of our friend Michael Freilich, this uh, has a somber overtone, but uh, we're just uh, so excited to have this mission being ready together with JPL, our European friends, various European partners, uh, to get this important mission focused on the oceans into space. Uh, the oceans, of course, being so relevant for much of the United States and the whole world. Great. Those are all fantastic. Um things to look forward to. You, you talk about partnerships, uh, and one of the ones I know you're particularly passionate about, give you an opportunity to maybe highlight a little bit, is the partnership between the Science Mission Directorate and NASA's Human Exploration Activities. Uh, how do you see that partnership working forward and, and, and the possibilities coming from that? 
So the first thing I, I wanted to just say when I joined NASA and, you know, before I joined NASA, I always felt that largely speaking, the separation of human and robotic exploration was kind of an organizational one, not a, an important one uh, that really uh, defined kind of in many ways uh, exploration uh, and separated them. In other words, you know, and, and of course my background is I did my PhD in a group that was enabled by the Apollo program. The experiment that was set up uh, next to Apollo 11 by Buzz Aldrin uh, was an experiment that uh, basically was at the, at the heart of building uh, one of the leading departments in the university I went to. And so for me, of course, human exploration affects science. Why wouldn't it? I mean, it's, it's a part of it and it always starts. So, so uh, I believe that therefore, uh, as we go forward with my colleague, Kathy Leaders, what's really important is that we lock arms and we push ourselves forward, we pull ourselves forward uh, to uh, benefiting uh, both human and uh, robotic exploration. There's much uh, robotic exploration to be done with amazing science, but I cannot wait to have human explorers go on the moon, go to Mars and do work that frankly, with robotic exploration, explorers at this moment in time, uh, it would be very hard for us to uh, unlock the science that's there. The same is true, of course, in the space station. We're already doing that today, learning about uh, uh, fundamental processes that without astronauts would be very hard for us to do. So it's critical for me that we're doing that. We're organized to do that with a deputy in our, in our office being responsible to really be uh, an interface and basically make it easy for our human exploration program to interact with us. The same is true with technology, by the way, where a similar argument can be made. Of course, technology is important to us. It's the science of tomorrow. Excellent. So uh, continuing with the theme of partnerships, how do you see the continued partnerships that uh, NASA has with the international partners on many of your uh, scientific missions? So international partnerships uh, in science, uh, I believe, are, are uh, with us to stay in a following sense. Uh, kind of what we tend to do uh, is, uh, is, you know, kind of when we run a program that is funded by uh, taxpayers from a given country, we think of, of course, uh, making sure that, you know, I mean, frankly, you, that sounds really corny, but there's many times in a room where we talk about taxpayers. You know, like we, we talk about how do we explain uh, kind of leadership and excellence needs to come. Uh, that's what we expect. Uh, that's what our elected representatives expect. That's what, uh, what our uh, leaders expect. Uh, that's what our taxpayers should expect. But uh, what I've been really proud of from the beginning, and I talked to you about the Apollo program already, but the same is true with others, uh, partnership and leadership have not been opposing values in the United States. And, and for me, uh, kind of as we go forward, uh, I believe that uh, international partnerships continue to be important to A, unlock science because of capabilities that are there uh, that we can uh, benefit from, mutually benefit from, but B, also because of the fact that as more nations go into space, those are potential partnerships that were not there in the past. So for us, uh, the, the partnerships that were, that, uh, the, the strategy that we're pursuing with international partnerships in alignment with the whole uh, agency is one, that uh, basically aligns our partnerships with our uh, most trusted partners uh, with, along the kind of priorities that we have uh, in, in science and the agency as a whole, but also opens the door uh, for newcomers and kind of entrance into space. We want to be uh, the uh, partner of choice uh, for them and really uh, kind of invite them to be exploring with us because we believe that uh, will make us all stronger and better as a community. Excellent. Uh, just maybe time for one more quick one. Uh, Thomas is partnerships with some of the emerging space companies. Uh, I noticed you had Astrobiotic, Astrobotic there, a, a major project there. So are there others on the horizon that you see coming? So we have a number of partnerships and uh, yes, I did show uh, Astrobotic, you know, it's a company that, you know, is kind of a what do we call kind of a Google X price company. I think, you know, having work kind of in the startup space before I, I believe that uh, startup companies in the United uh, States are some of the most important differentiators of leadership for us. And uh, the one thing that, that we uh, want to uh, do, uh, whether it's in earth science with data buys, such as from Planet, from Spire, whether it's in, in partnering with uh, new companies that build small buses, kind of in ways that we did not build uh, spacecraft before, whether it's with uh, partners for services and also with partners that have been with us for a, 
worthwhile. I think it's important for us uh, to open the spectrum and learn how to interact uh, and, and work productively with uh, some of these new companies because there's so much innovative potential. And frankly, it's a learning experience for all of us. The goal is not that they become something different. The, the goal is that we create interfaces for us to, uh, to uh, go work with them, but also we, don't, uh, we recognize that they're uh, partners that have different set of uh, rules, different set of characteristics and value metrics than some of the other commercial partners that we've had. Uh, what's really important to me, and I just want to say that uh, with uh, the audience there, is we need, I believe, at NASA headquarters and in the science mission directorate, more partners who are what I could call multilingual, people who understand multiple of these cultures to help us be the right partners. Sometimes uh, inadvertently, uh, we kind of uh, make it hard on these companies uh, to interact with us. Uh, our processes at times can be slow as compared to the time scale of, uh, that these companies operate under, uh, knowing real well how a venture from the company works, for example. So I just, I, I do believe that you know, the more we work with each other, the more we also send people across the demarcation line, so to say, the more we become a community and the more we uh, will uh, take advantage of, of these companies, such as Astrobotics, such as Planet, such as many of the companies that we can't just mention here that are on our uh, radar because they too uh, can change the entire field in a given segment or beyond. Excellent, excellent. Well, Thomas, thank you again so much for a great talk uh, and kicking us off with our first Ascendex Summit and uh, spending some time with us today. We really do appreciate it. Uh, now is the time for everyone uh, to focus on one of the five tracks that are available that we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, in the next five minutes, please uh, go to the session lobby and pick your next session. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone participating in the uh, inaugural Ascendex Summit and everyone have a great day. And Thomas, one more time, thank you again for, for helping get us kicked off. Thanks for the opportunity, Dan. Everyone have a great day.